Hello everyone, this is the LEGO Chinese New Year Temple Fair set. Now I completely missed the 2020 Chinese New Year season because of all the major, major upheaval and changes that had occurred on YouTube at the beginning of the year, and I had given up on the thought of even reviewing this set as a result. However, thanks to Patreon supporter Nolan G, the idea was resurrected and was rescued. So essentially you can thank his support and his request for the fact that I am reviewing this on this channel at all. And I really appreciate it as well because this is an amazing set, shockingly so. I mean, just look at this at first glance, 13 minifigures here, plus a baby, so much vibrance, so much detail and the prints. Oh, the prints, oh man. Before I get into actual details here though, I do wanna kind of establish just where I'm coming from, okay? I grew up watching Golden Harvest films. I was a walking distance from a major uh, Chinatown hub in a major metropolitan area and visited another one. I ate more than my share of dim sum. I studied Tai Chi at one point, but honestly, I'm not steeped in Chinese culture. Okay, I can't read the language. I don't know the proper names of each individual thing. Uh, I don't know the full significance of everything. So I'm just me. I'm just here to show you a cool Lego set. If you're looking for encyclopedic knowledge, I'm not the one to give it to you. Let's start with the main temple build, or rather the temple face. Uh, it's important to point out right from the start that this is indeed a facade. And by facade, I mean facade. Look at this one, I turn it to the side. It is completely flat, it's like it's just cut off right there. It's almost comical, but I actually kind of respect that design choice because, you know, if you're going to make a facade, you might as well make a facade, right? You might as well make something that can be backed up against a wall or the back of a bookcase for the sake of display. This is intended to be a display, pa uh, display piece, and they've not been shy about that in how it's been designed. So as long as you understand that in advance, then, you know, I think there's, there's no issue here. And it does display very nicely. It doesn't take up too much depth, so you're able to put additional things in front of it, even on just a regular bookshelf. And uh, the, the details, the little details. There is some repetition in the build, but I didn't find it to be annoying because it all feels appropriate, like for all of these roof elements. Nice little details that are different out towards the edges as well. A uh, bunch of gold colored pieces that are molded gold and Again, the prints, everything in this set that appears to be some sort of decoration is a print. So the lettering up there, that's with prints. These special things down here with the, the tiles, the smaller tiles, the one by tiles, those are prints that are unique to this theme. Not all of them are gonna be unique to just this one set, but to this relatively small theme. They brought in a lot of the uh, uh, teal color uh, I think some of those are recolors, again, for this theme. And it's just, it's just really nice. I like also the use of the stacked up container pieces for the, the sides of the door, you know, the, the opening right there. It's not a technique I think that I've seen Lego use before, at least not to that degree. And then basically, you know, for minifig uh, accommodation, you just have the balcony here. So you've got the stairs going up to the balcony and then you have the balcony itself, which is... You know, just deep enough to basically comfortably hold one minifigure in depth and you can put multiple side by side. So it's not going to hold a whole lot of people on it. There's not going to be a whole lot of minifig interaction with this. Uh, what I did find most annoying about the build was actually putting together these little bushes. Uh, I don't know if they're like poinsettia or something that they're trying to represent. Whatever they're trying to represent, uh, it's just a lot of little pieces that have to be kind of squished together. There's a little bit of additional... Uh, additional pressure that's involved there just beyond the norm and you know if you're if you're being a little bit impatient with it they'll end up flying off <laughs> as soon as you put them on overall though this is a pretty nice large colorful ornate centerpiece for the set but then we get to the market stalls the vendor stands now to me these are really the stars of the show of this set because there's so much little detail that's so much fun and they're really intended to be interacted with with the minifigures. You know, the, the temple looks great on display, but these are more Lego-like to me and just more, 
I don't know, just more fun and, and personable. So this one here has essentially toys over here, again, with another specialized print. A little one by one round tile there is a representation of a little fan, you know, a little paper fan or, or plastic fan, however they are making those. I'm sure it varies a little bit. Traditionally, they were paper. And then you have some additional toys over here, including the airplane with a slightly funky design. Looks like I altered the angle of the wing there a little bit, putting the balloons on the back. Some stuffed animals, including a, a rubber ducky on the inside there. And there's one additional thing around the back. I don't know what that teal box with the unicorn tile on top. That's not a new and unique tile for this set, but still a good use of it. I don't know what that's supposed to represent, but it looks cool. And, you know, this is just a place that you can expect kids, kid minifigures, to want to come. They've got a couple drawers on the back here for the vendor. Uh, presumably those would be money drawers and then the calculator for figuring out, you know, the total price for your purchase. The whole thing is just fun and really puts a whole lot of stuff into a very small space, not using too many pieces either. And it's it's really down at the minifigure level too. So if I bring in a minifigure, you know, it's, it's right there for them. So I like that. Uh, the roof on this one is not the best just because of the gaps when you get down to this level when you're looking really close. But I think the roofs on the, the other three look better. We've got a string of lights and lanterns back here. Another message that's that's uh, hanging from above that I can't read. Commenters will surely be happy to jump on. And then this is a food stand. So these are decorated steamed buns. Got a couple legs of poultry over here. Uh, some little candies, little, uh, uh, what would you call those? I guess pastries. And then this, <laughs> these look to the untrained eye like uh, kebabs. But why are they so colorful? As it turns out, they're actually the same things as these over here. They are candies. They're uh, fruits that are stuck on a stick and then covered with caramelized sugar or corn syrup or whatever, you know, some, some form of sugar uh, to turn them into hard candies or at least hard on the outside. And they have some little extra materials for making some more. Those represent sliced up fruits and such, and then a couple extra sticks to stick them onto. So yeah, this totally makes sense for the theme. I personally like this roof over here better. It's repetitive, but it just looks better to me. I think it looks good. Good use of those parts. Uh, clever part usage to create a different style of roof texture. More prints again. Print, print. That's a new print for this, this theme, or was a new print for this theme. Notice this box is one of those gift boxes, so that works out nicely. Also a little spot for a cleaver over here, and they got controls on the back for the grill, which is not going to be running too hot. It's not actually cooking the food. It's just, again, caramelizing to thereby harden the outside shell. I guess I should also point out that the bases here are on these pivots, so you can make that more of a, a flat display if you want to put this on a shelf. So it just brings everything in. So you can start to put these in front of the temple or have a bunch of people in front of them, again, on display with a shelf that's not too deep. And then we have this second set of vendors. I'm going to start with the one on the right, which actually has a roof with an identical build to the one that I didn't like out of the previous pair. But with the color swap here, using the teal pieces on top of the sand green, a little bit of dark green just underneath right there, and then the dark tan. I don't know, just that color scheme just works so much better for me. It's so much more believable. And uh, I don't know, I guess the, the other one was like red on red on red, just felt more toyish, especially with the gaps that were more visible underneath, to my eyes at least. So this one is selling like figures over here. I don't know if they're supposed to be action figures or something a little bit, a little bit older in style, uh, ceramic, wooden, or uh, like paper mache in, in design. I, again, I just don't know the specifics of, of historical items like that, but if it's modern, I mean, just look at them as action figures as far as I'm concerned. What I love here is the fact that these are genuine Lego nano figures in so many different colors. <laughs> you got the, the green there, gold, couple of them in gold, couple of them in orange. 
uh, dark red, which is not new. The dark pink is nice to see there. Uh, dark blue as well. Then there's an additional dark blue one there. And you're going to see even more of these in the spare parts for the set. On the other side of this vendor, uh, pottery, you know, uh, ceramic things that are built up interestingly with pretty straightforward Lego pieces just put together in clever and effective ways. I, I like those. I like the designs. Of course, having the little gold uh, pinstriping around that bowl piece right there is especially nice. But yeah, these are just, you know, built up in clever but simple, nice ways. It looks like a good little retail display. Around back, this one does not have the drawers down below for money and receipts and whatever else, packing material, I don't know, bags and stuff. That's a little bit of a miss uh, compared to the, the equivalent one. But you again have the calculator and you saw the dark blue action figure, this additional uh, vase, I guess, or you know whatever that's supposed to represent specifically. And I guess this is supposed to be an actual uh, inkwell and quill there. I don't personally recognize that color for this piece. I don't think I've seen that color used for that piece before. That's the school bus yellow, the key orange, or the flame yellowish orange or orangish yellow. Again, between the two stalls, there's a string of lights and lanterns and the printed banner there. And then this is not just simply a vendor. I mean, yes, you can pick some things up from here, some actual merch. You have big fireworks over here. <laughs> Something that, uh, at least in my state, you're not able to just pick up from a street vendor, but a very uh, key and, and core part of, of Chinese New Year celebrations, to be sure. Over here, just a box full of these sheets of these, these wishes, uh, again, using prints. Uh, that says, uh, I don't remember, it's either uh, wishing you good fortune or good luck. I don't remember which. Uh, again, prints on the sides here. Those are different than anything that we've seen up to this point. But the main thing going on here, oh, and another nice design. I think they use the same design for one of the Ninjago City sets, but uh, a nice design for the roof there with the traditional shingling. But this is intended to be a little bit of entertainment. It's a traditional shadow theater. So the idea is that there's a bright light shining from behind, and then little puppets and things are placed in there and People will you know, possibly be playing a little bit of music in the background uh, and possibly giving some, some narration, not necessarily, but definitely with the, the music, I'd say. And yeah, it's another print, this time printed on a, a window piece. And then around the back, there are just a couple of props to use with the Shadow Theater. It's, it's a shame that there is no suggestion of a light source, the projection light for this, but here you see just a dragon head and because that's literally a hilt piece that Lego made, used for Ninjago and, and such, it already has the handle on it, so you can just imagine the puppeteer, you know, just grabbing that and just moving the dragon into the scene and not taking it all the way across. The small figure here is scaled, actually the nano figure is scaled pretty well to the scenes that we see up on the screen itself, but uh, yeah, it's too bad they don't have more different details. There are a bunch of figures to look at, so I'll show you a few of them at a time. These are some of the more specialized ones, and you can see the, the shadow box theater guy on the right. Those are additional props as well. So the ones that you saw on the back of his stall exist as do these separately. So again, more extra special pieces. These all look pretty good. All the figures in this set look pretty good to me. The, the embroidery detail on this guy is, is so subtle. But it looks really good. It makes the, the cloth almost look more silken to me just because of the subtlety there. Uh, you know, I'm not just seeing the metallic part, but it, at least to me, with the blue, it gives an optical illusion, like as if the blue itself has some, some sheen to it. Not so much with the red here, which has the exact same print used, but uh, that might just be my eyes personally. But I like these. No alternate faces for any of these heads yet. Here, the lady on the left, I believe, is intended to represent a vendor as well, but that's entirely up to you to decide. And I think the two on the right, well, center and right, are parents, the co-parents of the baby that's included, and I'll show you that separately. Got the nice uh, hidden side hairpiece there with the knit cap on top that is dual molded, and all of these have these alternate faces. More regular folks here, nothing too special with these, but I celebrate the inclusion of just 
regular people in any Lego set that can be used for, you know, any kind of situation. So they're, they tend to be some of the best ones, in my personal opinion, just because you can use them for so many different things. No alternate faces here. These are the last two adults in the set, and each one has one of the candy kebabs. It's called uh, Tang Hulu, by the way. I don't know the exact pronunciation, but T-A-N-G-H-U-L-U. -U. I did look it up out of curiosity. And out of these, the most special thing is the inclusion of the red colored scarf for the guy on the right. That was originally introduced in orange, orange color, uh, for, uh, what was that, the Ninjago movie. I don't recognize that face personally, just personally. Uh, the one on the left, I guess he has just eaten way too much candy. Way, way, way too much. I kind of feel bad for him. And then just two kids, surprisingly. Uh, I feel like this set definitely could have used the inclusion of more younger people in this. I mean, especially considering that it's a Lego set and not strictly an adult collector set. Hey, look at that. Another print uh, exclusive to this theme, not just to this specific set, but those are the, the classic red envelopes with the, the money gifts inside. Another one of those red colored scarves over there on the right. And underneath here, an alternate face. Uh, I'm assuming that's for before he gets his money, when he thinks he might not be getting any. And this one is extra happy. That's like after she opens the envelope and realizes there's more there than she expected. The printing on that face is a little bit thick. Uh, I think the uh, the stamp came came down just a little bit too hard on that one. And then here's the baby with the winter style knit sweater on the teal colored main body. It's the second generation style of Lego baby with the correct neck. And then this is Lego's just general modern design of a baby carriage, which is, I think, a little bit oversized, you know, relative to a minifigure, just a little bit, not too much, but it's nice to actually build something up. It's mostly built around a single part, but it's a clever design and I think it works more than well enough. And then look at all these leftover pieces, all these spares, just revel in the glory of it all with all the extra different colors of the nano figs that's a, a drum lacquered piece not just a molded gold part getting an extra of those bowls with the the nice gold painting or printing all the way around this part in tan that in, in the gold color extra one of those micro peg or mini peg uh, propellers the feather piece which Again, I personally hadn't seen in that color before. Two, not just one, but two extra molded pearl gold uh, nano figs. The little, uh, just regular stud piece, but in medium nougat. One of these in black. I think there's another one in another color in here as, as well. I just, the, the prints, I think this is a printed piece over here as well. Yep, more common, but still a printed piece. An extra one of these candle flames. I mean, just all this stuff, it's just glorious. I love it, I love it. Also a little bit unrelated, but I really liked using this red color behind the minifigures as a background. Just felt a little bit uh, refreshing to me. Let me know what you think about that. Not that I would use red in particular uh, for everything, but I just kind of liked the look of that. So something different for me. Anyway, this set, this set. So talk about value, price and all that. $120 US over 1600 pieces okay so the price to part ratio sounds good on paper but it does have a lot of little pieces yeah it has a lot a lot of one by one things so price to part ratio looks fantastic the actual value here is not as good as the price to part rest uh, ratio itself that single number uh, would suggest in a vacuum that's why I personally tend to think about amount of stuff in general that's in, that's presented to me with the combination of the total volume, you know, the, the visual weight, the actual size of everything combined with the usefulness of each thing. Like how much value do I actually get out of this? If this was, if this little stall was its own set, would it be something that would be worth displaying? Would it be something that would be worth playing with? How does it interact with the minifigures? And just considering all of that, I feel like the value here is, is good. For $120, it's 
yeah, especially for that number of figures, I feel like it is, it's okay. I don't feel like it's a great value, honestly, n no matter what the price to part ratio number looks like to you. Uh, just the volume of stuff is not fantastic, but the level of detail is really good. And the additional value that has to be considered here is in all of those prints. Now they did, you would think that on kind of on the, the business side, Lego spread out the cost of those prints across this entire theme. So, you know, people are paying for some of these prints in other sets as well, but still the theme didn't have that many sets. And no matter what, if you buy just this set, you still get all of those prints. And that adds a lot of value. This really shows just how premium Lego can get. And actually, I think they can probably even go farther than this. But I mean, there's been no question unless you've been uh, uh, sleeping for the past couple of decades, there's, there's been no question of what Lego designers themselves are capable of. But then the Lego company on the whole has its own restrictions, has its own business things to worry about, has profits to worry about and marketability and projections and all these, you know, you know so many things and, and, and the, the retail partners and what they're expecting, and shelf space, there's so many things that ultimately uh, often work against us, against us big fans getting really, really, really cool stuff. Um, but, you know, this is an example of what Lego can do when I think they, they loosen up the, the restrictions a bit and let themselves put out a product that is really good. You know, a bunch of pieces of plastic that go together well, that makes sense, that means something and have good quality. Um, you know, there were a couple of prints on minifigures that were a little bit splotched. Uh, just again, just the, the, the stamp that comes down, I think just, just hit them a little bit too hard. And that happens sometimes, but for the most part, quality here is pretty good. Even interestingly, uh, the colors between different parts are, are pretty well matched. I did notice while building this, some of the, uh, these pieces, the, the, yellowish orange flame yellowish orange or orangish yellow color school bus yellow color key orange uh, did not match each other perfectly and that's something i've been seeing always and i'm assuming that they're just from different batches you know not different parts that are made from the same same time period but still that could be better but uh, most of the stuff seems to match up pretty well the teal parts there are a lot of teal parts in this and they seem to be matched up better than they were on for example the uh, the downtown diner set, uh, one of the first sets to, to bring that teal color back. Um, I like this. I like this thing. I'm, I'm completely happy about it. And so thankful to, to Nolan over on, on Patreon for selecting this and rescuing this from, from never being looked at again by me. Um, I honestly had never given these sets a good long look to really put myself in, like, look at the pictures and imagine I was there and really understand what all I'm looking at. And there is a lot here. The build process was, was a little, a little odyssey. So many different little build techniques, so many different parts that are just exciting to me. And then that, that selection of minifigures for folks who love minifigures, especially is, is good. But for me, I love the fact that I can use almost all of those parts of figures just around my city, you know, doing anything, being anything, just being regular citizens. It's the best type of figure in, in my personal opinion. So, so much great stuff. Sorry that I personally just don't have, like I said, the, the encyclopedic knowledge of the exact names of everything. I could have spent an additional hour or two researching everything to have a cheat sheet offhand to say, well, the name of this is actually this and its history is this, but I mean, if you already know the stuff, then that would simply appease the folks who already know the stuff. Folks who don't know the stuff, you'd be better off just going and learning on your on your own, honestly. But hopefully this, uh, for folks who are not familiar with Chinese New Year celebrations or anything, this will kind of open the eyes to some folks who might want to learn more about some of this stuff. But uh, at the very least, hey, it's just Lego stuff, pieces of plastic that are cool, that are done well, gives you respectable value, not fantastic, but respectable value. And the end result is super displayable and playable as well. One last time, thanks to Nolan. And I think everybody owes him 
a, a bit of thanks if you enjoyed this at all. You can also check out the real-time build of this. You want to see the whole thing. It was, I think, almost three hours it, it took in total. And uh, if you don't want to spend that kind of time, you know, just kind of having that running in the background while you do other stuff, you want to actually see the build, check out the speed build. You know, time-lapse condenses everything down so you can see all of it and pause if you want. And I hope you enjoyed this. And I certainly did. So I will talk to you again soon. And I appreciate you watching. Bye for now.